Hi booktube! This is my first attempt at doing just a solo book review. My review is for Clearing the Plains, Disease, Politics of Starvation, and the Loss of Aboriginal Life by James Dashuk. This was published by the University of Regina Press, I believe in, it was in 2013. I thought it was last year. I only picked it up last year, but it was published in 2013. And James Dashuk is from Regina. He is a let me let me give you some information. He has a PhD in the, in history from the University of Manitoba and is an associate professor in the Faculty of Kinesiology and Health Studies at the University of Regina, and a researcher with the Saskatchewan Population Health and Evaluations Research Unit. So he has a lot of experience in disease. I'd like to point out that I put I put my post-its in, okay? So this post-it denotes that this is the end of the book. This is the beginning of, there's a map section to show you all the regions he's talking about. And then the rest of this, this is all notation. This is what I like to see in a book that is this heavily based on ideas. It is broken down into nine chapters and a conclusion, and each chapter deals with a different time period, as we can see here. So, indigenous health, environment, and disease before Europeans, the early fur trade, early completion and the existence of trade and disease, despair and death during the fur trade wars, expansion and settlement, expansions of settlement and erosions of health during the HBC monopoly, Canada, the Northwest, and the treaty period, treaties, famine, and epidemic transitions on the plains, dominion of administration relief, and the nadir of indigenous health with a conclusion. Now, each section is horrifying. <laughs> There's no way around it, and I laugh because it's, you either have to laugh or cry. Dashuk traces the way disease and the way the dealing with the disease and the subsequent um, impoverishment of the Aboriginal First Nations. I'm just going to say like Aboriginals because it's Aboriginal life on the cover. I'm, so I'm going to use Aboriginal as a blanket term to refer. Uh, I understand that some persons prefer to be called First Nations, some persons prefer to be called Indigenous, and we should address them as whatever re reserve or tribe they're from. However, given the situation I'm going with Aboriginal because he's uh, clearly labeled that on the cover. So in each of the chapters as we move through the decade or decades that he is tracing because we, be begin, we begin in the 1700s with the expansion of colonialism across the plains and how disease vectors acted in different areas. Let's face it, Ontario, Montreal, they had dealt with a good portion of all of this previously with the settlement of the America and Canada in that area, Upper Canada, Lower Canada, America, the establishment of the American colonies, etc. The expansion out west really affected Aboriginal people in ways that could not be really projected at the time. And Dashuk looks into one of the myths of the smallpox blanket, which is that everybody figured these blankets were infected with smallpox and were given to the Aboriginal people and that's how they contracted it. And no, he goes further to discover that the reasons for this are actually different and it has to do with how the Aboriginal people were hunting and how the animals had actually become infected because of trade up and down the Missouri and how the bringing of equestrianism up from the su southwestern Americas into Alberta brought certain uh, vectors of disease into Alberta and that spread with the spread of horses how there were two different kinds of tuberculosis a bovine and a non-bovine version and the bovine version of course affecting humans as they ate the infected meat then we get into how reserves were created and how the government controlled and monopolized the reserves and used food as a way to force them into doing things by starving them out and had no problem starving them out and feeding them tainted food and of course once you get them into a state of malnutrition and a state of uh, unable to function because of the malnutrition any disease that comes in is going to wipe everybody out and how these diseases wipe people out and how the CPR, the Canadian Pacific Railway, which is the big railway that can connects Ontario 
with British Columbia and it, as that completed it created even more problems and these are problems we wouldn't have considered because back in the day we didn't really understand disease or or the the way in which viruses and bacteria traveled or how they would be affected or even the fact that malnutrition would become something that would make the diseases worse there is brief discussion about a few people who did try to immunize the Aboriginal population but re didn't really succeed and how the government of Ottawa, uh, Sir Johnny MacDonald, etc., during their time periods really wanted to uh, cease to occur. They didn't want to honor the treaties they had made with the Aboriginals to keep them on the reserves by feeding them, etc., because of the famines that they had caused and subsequently how trying to cut back on how much money they spent on aboriginals back then created this malnutrition and this cycle of just utter desolation. Dashuk has researched the living bejesus out of this stuff. It is really well written. It's vaguely academic, like I would say this, this does have an academic ring, but he tells it in a story format that is very easy to digest. It is, however, really depressing material. I would say if you're Canadian this should be mandatory reading. This is the first five-star book I have had uh, this year. I've, I've given a, a few four stars but this is a five-star and I don't even think about it. I think this should be mandatory in Canadian universities. I think this should probably be taught portions of it in a high school setting in Canada so that we understand the implications of the expansion in the West and how that affected the Aboriginal populations. Because there's a lot of myth and there's a lot of um, hostility on both parts of like, just forget it, just get past it. But Dashuk takes that on and in his conclusion actually points to different ways in which this has impacted the culture to this day and how Aboriginal people continue to have issues because of the way that this has all played out and how current Aboriginal health structures um, and why tuberculosis still exists on reserves and why reserves are considered third world nations continually um, how Canada needs to change because it's still ongoing. Uh, let me just read this briefly to you. The gap between the health, living conditions, and other social determinants of health of the First Nations people and mainstream Canadians continues as it has since the end of the 19th century. While Canadians see themselves as world leaders in social welfare, health care, and economic development, most reserves in Canada are economic backwaters with little prospect of material advancement and more in common with the third world than with the rest of Canada. Even basics such as clean drinking water remain elusive for some communities. Identification of forces that have held indigenous communities back might provide insights into what is required to bridge the gap between the First Nations communities and the rest of Canada today. If you're interested in Aboriginal people or history or Canada in the history of Aboriginal Canadians, this is a book for you. Um, yeah. So, five stars. Go read it if it's an interesting topic to you. It's a national bestseller. It's won many awards. Rightfully so. Thank you.